is it possible to be too healthy? The answer is 100% yes. And today we're going to talk about what that is. It's called orthorexia. And we're going to talk about how that is different than just regular old healthy eating. At the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what orthorexia is and how it's different from healthy eating, really where that line is drawn. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a super quick and easy screening tool that you can use if you're unsure if maybe you've crossed the line into orthorexia from healthy eating. Because as you're going to see, the line is really blurry. Plus, I'm going to share a little bit of my story on my views on healthy eating and how I've managed to find that balance and not cross the line. And you totally can too. So be sure to stick around all the way to the end to get those. As a registered dietitian, I'm obviously interested and a huge advocate for leading a healthy lifestyle, but that also includes having a healthy relationship with food. To be honest, it's probably one of the most important parts. Okay, let's dive on in. So what is orthorexia? So it's defined as having an unhealthy obsession with nutritious foods. It can lead to a style of eating that is so strict that it can actually have health and nutrition related complications. It can result in malnutrition, social isolation, and severe psychological disturbances. Orthorexia can really have kind of two stages. So a lot of times it starts out with you start a diet or a lifestyle or whatever in the pursuit of bettering yourself, right? We think we're doing the right thing, but then it can develop into a serious obsession. And that is where that line is drawn. I feel like this has become so much more common, especially with, first of all, just the amount of trendy diets that are out there that everyone's going on. Whether you decide to go vegan, paleo, all organic, I mean, everything under the sun. It starts off trying those trendy things, things that you see all over Instagram, and then it spirals. It becomes obsessive, it becomes ritualistic, and really compulsive and can actually lead to self-punishment if you break any of your rules or you eat something that you feel like you shouldn't. A lot of times you'll achieve this feeling of superiority or you're striving for this perfectionism. You feel just the sense of purity. And to be honest, you might start to judge others who don't share those same views that you have. You start to spend so much time planning your meals and what foods you're gonna have and when you're gonna have them. And again, it can really have that social isolation piece to it where you don't wanna go out to dinner, you don't want to let someone else cook for you, or you don't wanna just give up any ounce of control when it comes to your food and your eating habits. It really starts to interfere with your everyday life and food becomes that center. Now, there really does need to be more screening tools available and more definitions of it, because like I said, it is kind of that blurry line right now. But I do feel like it's becoming more and more on the rise of the general population having these orthorexic tendencies, especially in the influencer space, especially as that's growing. I mean, we just get so, so much comparison I guess for everyone else that we see on Instagram and everyone is always only posting those highlight reels of their life when they're eating the kale, they're eating the avocado toast, they're eating all of the quote unquote healthy things. We start to get down to this comparison trap of what we're eating. We think that person's eating that way all the time and it can really spiral into these tendencies. So just some general characteristics, you have that obsession, you start to tie your self-worth to your eating habits and eating in a way that you feel is pure. You may start to have a very, very restrictive diet and only feel comfortable eating a small range of foods or small range of types of foods, social isolation. You really start to feel that this is your identity. And again, those are just some of the different characteristics and just kind of pieces of the screening tools that we do have available, but there does need to be more kind of defining of this and really what are we using to screen this? Cause it's a fine line. So more research is needed on this. Okay, so how does orthorexia differ from other disordered eating patterns? So there are a lot of overlaps with 
orthorexia and other disordered eating patterns. There's the sense of control. You need that predictability, just really that preoccupation with food and eating, restrictive eating habits, eating rituals, having stress and anxiety around food. But like some other eating patterns, with orthorexia, you're really focused on the quality of your foods, not necessarily the quantity. So it's not necessarily weight focused more health focused. Now you can have overlap. You can have, you know, the sense of wanting to really, really shrink your body and also having those orthorexic tendencies, but really kind of looking at orthorexia and what it is, it's focused on that purity, that healthiness of the food, the quality of the food, not necessarily the quantity. But again, there can be overlap and one could morph into the other. But typically weight loss is not the main goal. Okay, so now what is the difference between orthorexia and healthy eating? Fab question. I feel like I've said it like 80 times in this video, but it's a fine blurry line. And here's kind of a test that I'll do or that I'll suggest doing to kind of see the difference between the two. Okay, so let's say that you are in the bread aisle and normally you choose whole wheat bread. It's got some extra fiber, got some extra nutrients in there. Fabulous. But the day you go, they are all out of wheat bread and all they got is white bread. The wonder bread, the thick, the fluffy stuff, that stark white. What happens? Do you simply say, oh, that's a bummer of, you know, what I usually get. I guess I'll take some of the white bread, the wonder bread, whatever it is that they have on hand. Do you say, I'll just take some of what they have, no big deal, it'll be back in stock? Or do you freak out and say, oh my gosh, I cannot eat that. Like, I'm gonna have to go without bread. If you have stress or anxiety, that's likely an indication that maybe you're starting to cross that line. Or here's another example. So say you're in the mood to bake something and you're scrolling through Pinterest, but you are only allowing yourself to even think about making anything that says healthy or paleo or skinny or grain free, whatever your kind of food rules are, you're only allowing yourself to stick to those. And you couldn't even imagine making a grandma Bessie's traditional butter laden banana bread. Couldn't imagine it. That might also be another question to ask yourself. I would definitely say that I've definitely dealt with some orthorexia tendencies. I also did have that tie to weight and I really wanted to always shrink my body, but there was definitely some of those tendencies. And to be honest with you, I asked myself that test question, the would you freak out? Would you have stress or anxiety around the unhealthy option? All the time. And thankfully I have a very healthy relationship with food and no, I don't have that stress or anxiety. But having a history with food rules, I do always ask myself. And I would say that I do have a generally healthy eating pattern and I do follow a general healthy diet. I say that in quotes because you guys know all foods fit in a healthy eating style. There is no good or bad. There is no healthy or unhealthy in my opinion. But I say that because you get what I mean. It's what society has deemed healthy. And going back to that bread example, yes, I do typically pick the whole wheat bread when I'm grocery shopping because I enjoy it just as much as regular white bread. It's got some extra fiber, some extra nutrients, keeps me full longer, so why not pick it? But let's say with rice, my husband, and honestly me too, prefers white rice. So majority of the time we pick white rice over brown rice, even though it's deemed less healthy. I'm not gonna force myself to eat something I don't want to. It's okay to pick the quote unquote healthier option. It's also okay to not pick that option if it doesn't satisfy you. Ask yourself, does this satisfy me just as much? Because we know satisfaction is important to enjoying your meal, feeling full, not thinking about food all the time. And would I freak out if the healthy option wasn't available? If you would freak out or have stress or anxiety or feel like you needed to cut back or over exercise, that's when we really need to take a look at our relationship with food and our bodies. So as you can see, it can be a fine line between what is being too healthy, what is an orthorexic tendency, and what is just me trying to feel my best and fuel my body. I think it comes down to really, really being honest with yourself and understanding would this cause me stress and anxiety if I couldn't have these options? Because like I've already said, there's nothing wrong with choosing the quote unquote healthy option, 
What matters is your why. Are you doing it because you feel like it's gonna make you superior or it's going to make you a better person or you're doing it because, hey, why not? It makes me satisfied just as much, don't notice that as much of a difference, so it's fine. I hope this video gave you just some clarity on your relationship with food and are you going too far into the healthy eating side? Do you still have that balance? Do you still have that flexibility with yourself? Let me know in the comments if you guys have any other topics that you want me to cover or any other kind of really ways to keep yourself in check, right? I mean, it's so, so easy to go down these comparison traps with the people that we're seeing on the internet who are likely only sharing the highlight reels and just really, really keeping yourself in check, not swinging way too far on the trying to eat clean, be pure side of things. It's all about balance. It's all about flexibility, all about not having food rules and eating in a way that makes you feel good. And sometimes you just want like a grilled cheese with freaking white bread and it's fine. And I hope I know that everyone can get to this place of having a healthy relationship with food. So if you're watching this and thinking, I could never do that, yes you can. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. If you want to learn more about living a life of no food rules and really finding that balance with food, because like I said, I know you can. I literally never thought I'd live a life without food rules and look at me now, it's literally what I do for a living is teach other women in my membership how to do this too. So I know everyone can do it. I didn't think I could either, but you can. And with that, I will see you next week, 5 p.m. Eastern time when a new video is uploaded so that you can start living a life of no food rules too, one that makes you feel fab mentally and physically. See you then.